If you experience wrist pain when you do yoga or when you're working out, or maybe you're a trainer or fitness instructor looking for ways to help your clients build wrist strength, then you're in the right place. In today's video, I'm gonna cover how to modify popular exercises like the plank and how to better align your wrists when you're holding weights like dumbbells for wrist pain or wrist discomfort. And I'm also gonna share four simple but extremely effective exercises to help you start building wrist strength today so that you can continue to build strength in your upper body without hurting your hands or your wrists. Hi, I'm Jesse McMaster, holistic fitness trainer, yoga teacher, and body worker, here to share tools that empower you to take your health and your fitness into your own hands so you can feel strong and capable in your body now and for years to come. If you find this video helpful, please help me by liking and subscribing. And I'd love to know how these exercises go for you. So please feel free to leave a comment below. All right. Let's jump into it. Our hands and our wrists are really important and we need them to be functioning properly so that we can operate in our daily lives. And it is such a bummer when our wrists hurt or our hands are not functioning the way we want them to. And my hope with this video is to give you some tools that you can use and apply to your daily life to keep your hands and your wrists functioning and strong. So step one in learning how to modify for your wrists, start spending time in those shapes, those hand shapes that you are trying to achieve. So if you want to do planks or in yoga class, you want to do a good chaturanga or start to do arm balancing, then you need to get really used to splaying your fingers, spreading the fingers, and then adding a little bit of weight, pushing against the hands using the fingertips, right? Think about the shape that you want to achieve here. If you want to get better at holding heavy weights, then you need to really strengthen that grip strength. And you'll find that as you spend more time in those shapes, those hand shapes that you're trying to achieve, that your hands, all the joints and the muscles in the hands, the wrist and the forearm will get used to that shape and it will get easier. Second, I want you to think about a few fundamentals about your upper body, the matrix of the upper body. So we have our hands, we have our fingertips, right? These structures of the hand. And I need to understand that I need to use my fingertips, whether I'm in a plank position or I'm holding heavy weights, I got to use my fingertips because that's going to support the matrix of the hand. But then my hand is also supported by from my wrist up into my elbow. So what I'm doing with my elbows is going to be really important. And oftentimes that means I need a little micro bend in the elbows, whether I'm in a plank or I'm holding weight. But my elbow is attached to my shoulder. And so what I'm doing with my shoulders is going to be really, really important for how supported my wrists feel. Now, most often the best place for the shoulders is to make sure that they are not going up into the ears, but they are pulling down because that sets the shoulder girdle on top of the rib cage and it allows you to activate more muscles to help stabilize the shoulder girdle as you go through the exercise. Now let's talk specifically about the plank. When your hands come to the mat or a bench or whatever you're doing, you always want to spread your fingers wide. Always. Right? Tiny fingers means less support for your wrists. Big spread fingers gives you more support. So that's always step one is how can I spread my fingers? And sometimes I need to get really good at holding my hands here with my knees down. And so if I'm in a plank and I'm trying to build up to a plank, I can slowly make this plank a little more challenging just by scooting my knees back a little bit. But now I want to be aware of my alignment from my wrist to my elbows. And I want to make sure that my elbows hug in towards each other. As I hug my elbows in, what that does is it turns on the muscles of the back of the upper arm. And that allows me to pull my shoulders out of my ears. And then I want to be aware of my ribs and I want to make sure the front of my ribs aren't dumping to the floor, but I'm drawing the front of the ribs in. So now, as soon as I do this, I'm using my fingertips, spreading the fingers, splaying the fingers. I'm hugging my elbows in, my shoulders are back. I'm knitting up the front of my ribs. And now I have a nice, strong shape to do my plank. If you're experiencing wrist discomfort or pain in a plank position or even a tabletop position, option one is to decrease the amount of pressure on the wrist. And a way we can do that
that is, you know, by using my knees, right? That would be step one. But I can also do that by elevating my hands. So I can take two yoga blocks, bring the ground up just a little bit, and now I have less pressure on my wrists. If I was in a gym trying to do a plank, maybe elevating my hands up to a bench. Another option is to decrease the angle at the wrists. So in a plank position, right, my shoulders over wrists, if I just scoop my or shift my shoulders back slightly, that takes a lot less pressure out of my wrists. But the problem with shifting the weight back is I need to be mindful that my shoulders don't creep up into my ears. I'm pulling my shoulders down. I'm hugging my elbows in. Another option when you're experiencing wrist pain uh, in a plank position, but you still want to strengthen your wrists is to be on your fists, right? So I can punch the ground and be on my fists. And oftentimes that's going to be really helpful. I just want to make sure that when I'm punching the ground, that my wrist, this line from my knuckles to my elbow is staying really straight. I don't want to be crinking my wrists like this, right? I want to make it nice and straight, nice and strong. Now, if none of those modifications or variations seem to be working for you and you're still experiencing that wrist pain, the next step would be to just do the exercise from your forearms. So taking your forearms to the mat and just lay off the wrist completely. Being on your forearms will still give you an opportunity to strengthen your shoulders and your core and your upper body without putting all that weight in your wrists. And oftentimes utilizing the forearms is your best option if you're dealing with a wrist sprain or strain or some sort of injury in the wrist and you just need to lay off of it for a couple weeks. Do the exercises from your forearms. It's going to be a lot more work for your shoulders, but it will build that shoulder strength. And when you feel up for it and you do go to your wrists, you'll have so much more support from your shoulders when you go into that straight armed position. One very important factor about a plank position is the idea of hugging your elbows in. And sometimes that's easier said than done. So what I like to do is I like to take a yoga strap and I place it above my elbows uh, about, you know, we're about shoulder distance here. And I'm going to use this to help me understand how to hug my elbows in in a plank position. So I splay my fingers. Now, because I have the strap here, I'm unable to let my elbows go out to the side. So I have to hug my elbows in. I like to micro bend the elbows. So I pull my shoulders down. I knit up my ribs, right? I have to really think about my alignment. And now I can go into my plank. Oftentimes having the strap around the upper arms will just give you this nice tactile cue so that you can start to build that strength. You can understand how your elbows play a major factor into supporting the hands and the wrists. My all-time favorite way to modify for wrist pain or wrist injuries is to create a wrist wedge. And there's a couple ways you can do this. So I can take a folded blanket or a folded towel or something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a wedge underneath my palm, underneath the heel of my hand. Fingers will be on the floor. So I can do that with a blanket here. Fingertips are on the floor. But what I'm doing by elevating the heel of the hand is I'm decreasing the angle at the wrist puts a lot less pressure onto the wrist joint. If I don't have a blanket and I'm just, let's say in my yoga class, an easy way is to roll up the top of my mat. And now I'm creating that wrist wedge from the top of my mat. This is a super helpful and beneficial way to decrease the angle at the wrist so that you can be do your plank, do your chaturangas, your pushups, whatever it is, but a lot less pressure on the wrist joint. All right, we talked about a lot of different ways to modify for wrist pain. So now let's go into four simple exercises you can start doing today to help you build some wrist strength. Our first exercise is called a seal stretch or a Sometimes they call it a seal walk. And it really is just me turning my fingers back. And this puts the wrist into extension. And for a lot of us, oftentimes we go to work out or do push ups or do planks, and our wrists are just not used to this very extended position. So just starting by placing your hands on the ground with your fingers back, spreading the fingers, and getting the hands used to that position. Now, if putting your hands on the ground feels like too much, you can do that against your desk, practicing that shape of the hand. You could do it against your steering wheel in the car while you drive. The idea is to get the wrist out of its normal, you know, like this, typing at the computer, gripping the steering wheel position and doing the opposite. So opening up the hand. Once you get used to that position, you can turn it into a little walk, right? One and then the other, spreading the fingers getting the hands really used to that position. Exercise number two are finger push-ups. The way to keep your wrists safe and out of pain is to have strong fingers. So we gotta strengthen these fingers. 
And we want to put the hands on the ground or on, you can start on a desk. It doesn't have to be all your weight. Just get used to putting pressure into your fingertips. It's helpful to have like a tennis ball underneath your wrist so that you can put a little bit more weight. And we're not, we want to make sure we are not collapsing the knuckles or collapsing the wrists. So I can have a tennis ball under my hand and just get used to, okay, this shape, putting weight into my fingers and then taking the weight out. Once I get comfortable with that, then I can start to press the knuckles down, lift, press the knuckles down, lift, creating these little finger push-ups, making sure that I'm not collapsing fingers. I'm not dumping into my wrists. I'm really maintaining that nice, strong finger, splayed finger, strong hand position. It almost feels like you got like a catcher's mitt. Whoa, strong, strong. And that's the idea with those finger push-ups. Get the hand used to utilizing those fingertips, utilizing the knuckles of the hands. Move number three is one of my favorite wrist exercises and I swear by this exercise because there was a long while where I was trying to do handstands and get do fancy yoga arm balancing poses and my wrists just started killing me and it was such a bummer but when someone showed me this exercise it was life changing so now in all my workshops and my yoga teacher trainings I always show people this exercise because I think we all need to know it so you take a rubber band this can be you know like the one a rubber band that's around your broccoli is really really good or your asparagus uh, you want like an office rubber band works best. You're going to place it around your first knuckles, first knuckles all the way around. And then we want to open the hand and close the hand. Now, this might be really challenging at first. And so you might need to get your other hand in there. And we're trying to create the catcher's mitt. So there's plenty of space between the pinky knuckle and the thumb knuckle, right? This is really stretched out. What we don't want is we don't want to collapse the knuckles like this. We don't want to flatten out the fingers like that. We really want this round like we're holding trying to hold a softball or hold a grapefruit in our hand and then release and you just do a couple rounds you do about anywhere five to ten reps and then each hand and then you shake it out what this exercise does is it helps to strengthen the muscles in the forearm up here which oftentimes the muscles on this side of the forearm aren't as strong as the muscles that are on this side of the forearm and so we just it helps to balance out the wrist it helps to open up the carpal tunnel which is what we describe as this location of the wrist, opening that up, strengthening the muscles on the back of the hand to help us splay the fingers. And this exercise will help your wrists so, so much. So, so please, if you want to start strengthening your wrist, the rubber band exercise is definitely one to add in. Finally, exercise number four is starting to strengthen your grip strength. You can start by having a grippy ball, even just a tennis ball like this, just squeezing, practice squeezing it, rolling it around in your hand, using different parts of your fingertips on the ball, squeezing it, doing both hands, just getting your hands used to grabbing, squeezing, gripping nice and strong. Then you can progress to using a dumbbell. And uh, this is just like a, if you're revving a motorcycle, right? So I'm holding, I'm holding on to the handlebars of my motorcycle and revving. And so this is a great way to strengthen these muscles on this side of the forearm again. And I can start to progress. I can go a little heavier once that gets, once I get really good with that. So pulling my knuckles up to the ceiling is a great way to strengthen those muscles of the forearm. And with all these exercises, you start with what you can do. A good rule of thumb is 10 reps for three rounds. Maybe it's squeezing the ball and I just squeeze 10 and then I release and I shake it out and I do it again. That's always a good rule of thumb, but start where you are. Pick which exercises seem like the best exercises for your body and whatever you're dealing with and start there. Just start to add little bits in and you'll start to notice a really big difference with your strength and a decrease in your wrist and hand pain. I hope you found this video helpful about how you can strengthen and protect your wrists and your hands as you exercise, as you do yoga. We want to make sure that we keep our hands healthy and strong so that they can continue to work for us for years to come so that we can continue to carry the groceries in or open the pickle jar, whatever it needs to be. And if you found this video helpful, please help me by liking and subscribing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.